Hello, we've got a special guest for the weekly Hello. podcast show. Hello. Fresh Hello. off of Nova, number two. Yo, second best Galaflux player in the world. And definitely for... second best at Nova. Oh yeah, 100%. The final match was Orion's Deep Hulks, Depth Hulks yeah. versus the Necron Hulks in a Cronenberg mashup on a Space Hulk. Who knows what's going to come out of the box, but I don't... But... My 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 tentacle monster met his tentacle monster. It was great. Wild, absolutely disgusting. <laughs> how many uh, players were there at at Nova, and how many rounds uh, was it? It was eighty eight tickets, but I think because of the weather, they only got seventy six, and it was four think, rounds day one. I think I dropped. It was like seventy seven or like seventy eight people. So yeah, a couple of people dropped. So it was four rounds day one, then top cut to three rounds day two. Well. Pods day two. Nice. So seven rounds altogether. Yeah, that first Sweet. four rounds. I ended up dropping for some extra stuff on Sunday, but I was 2 1 1 at the time. So our Caskin boys out here, you know, they're doing a, I think, a 52 percenter, 44 percenter. So did okay. If I was able to put my stats in, then it would do a little better for the weekend. But really, I did get a sense that they were, they did have some issues, mostly around. Starting the chain of events that keeps them in a positive win rate. Because there are quite a few chonky teams at 10 wounds, 10 operatives. So commandos and scouts are just kind of hard. I never got to play scouts or uh, vet guard, brood brothers, mandrakes, or any of the smaller teams that I could bully theoretically. Did you run into elites? Uh, I did not run into elites. There were not a ton of elite players. For the weekend. Although Towns of the Emperor still had their little showing, you know, at a bunch of eight round or at different eight different events with about three people each. You know, some of them did pretty well. A couple three O's. Getting in those final games with the Towns before they ride off into the sunset. Yeah. I suspect that, you know, for the big tentpole factions, you know, Grey Knights, Custodies, High Fleet, I gotta imagine that if they if the edition is sold as well as it's seeming it will, you know, with the resurgence of players, that it's on their roadmap. Yeah. But I guess we've been saying that for three whole years, so we'll see. Yeah, the compendium was really holding us down in those zones because they were pretty consistently showing up. Intercession had 18 players with a 41% win rate. Right there with a Legionary at 37 and Nemesis Claw at 43 and Strike Force Justin at 42. So it does seem like Elites definitely had some issues this weekend trying to make it up the top brackets. Yeah, overall though, this is like the most blue bars we've had in a long time. Like it's the blue bars are the ones that are like in that uh, 40 to 60 percent. Um, this week is looking super balanced. We got like twice as many players as the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, actually, of note, this is probably the highest player count we've had since May. And we're right next to Age of Sigmar, at least by the way we cut stats with, you know, needing at least three players per faction. So we're loosely around 480 players, and Age of Sigmar was around 670 this week. Or 730, so it's pretty good as far as, you know, a week of kill team goes. Yeah super solid um and there's like no one that was like super duper spiking way up there i mean the brood brothers what is that like 61 percent? yeah it's like 60.6 so just barely past the 60 mark uh as far as you know elites that are a little surprising we do have warp coven out there at 54 percent win rate with fully undefeated record out in Prague, and then a loss in the final match in australia try me out yeah, in Melbourne. Did you redo, mate? Yeah, so, you know, who knows? And then another 201 finish with Scott Kennedy, I think, in the team tournament. So there was an undefeated Warp Coven player in the team's tournament. Nice. Of course, uh, one interesting note on player count Chaos Cult's return with a mighty four players. They came in with uh, not a horrible win rate. 
Yeah, of course. Oh. It's mostly because Hava, the world championship second place, who played on Chaos Cults, uh, played in Aust- or in his tournament in, in Barricon. It looks like an invitational. Play played seven rounds, and he lost two of them. Unplayable team. I understand why so many people have dropped Chaos Cults. <laughs> Third place out of 35. The Chaos Cult player base remains small but mighty. Yeah. I, I was waiting for that for a while. I was like, you know, I feel like someone good will just play them in an event. It'll spike their win rate, but it's still going to be a small sample size, and we'll be like, still good, just not popular. Yeah, you know, we've often said that much about Gellerpox. Generally, there's like two or three players in the world that are pretty good at them. Turns out at Nova, both of them were there, and it turns out, oh yeah, this week they did very well. But if we cut those two people out of the data set, uh, oh, yeah, you know, we're, let's see, well. yeah, they'll be... Oh, who was down at the bottom? I can... Uh, okay, so I can't actually do this. Let's do that. All right, give me a second to discard this event and see what happens. Well, what? Why did it go up? I can't be right. <laughs> oh no, this is GT level. Ah, there we go. If I remove, it goes up. If I move <laughs> them off, Galar blocks are all the way down to a fifty-one win rate. So it's literally me on the Ryan breaking Galar Yeah. <laughs> To be fair, there's a couple other people that are doing it, but yeah, Gellerpox definitely got pushed real hard by, by you know, the two best players on them. Oh, well. what about the week when I got a 6-0 win at Warhammer World with them? I'm not going to go look for that right now. Was it two weeks oh, ago? We're doing the weekly stat show, okay? I think we chatted about it a little bit. Uh, yeah. We highlighted we, we that. We definitely mentioned, like, like, oh, yeah. Guests ego come. Yeah, they were like, cause I think that week they were kind of like smack in the, in the middle-ish, but like, they would have been worse like, without that. Oh, yeah. Six zero. Some dude just six zero in people with Galifox. Yeah, Falgor uh, had a three three zero finish in the team tournament with Liam, and then nothing else really in contention. You know, Shane went to Nova, did pretty well, four zero his getting into bracket, and then went one and two in the top cut, losing to this guy on an eighty six percent chance likelihood to uh, make a game. Didn't happen, oh. and then in his next game. Played against Commandos, charged a dude with Sledgehammer with his leader who hit on twos and died, of course. And then the next guy that went in also did not kill the Sledgehammer Orc. So, you know, it do be happening sometimes. Sledgehammer Orc meta. Yeah, it turns out the Felgor who went went in had four attacks on twos and rolled four ones. Excellent choice. If he rolls one more one, you'd get a Yahtzee and you actually get 50 points for that. Yeah. So, pretty cool. Wormblade did okay this week. Uh, as far as the teams that were in the most striking contention, it's obviously Gellerpox at a 2.8. Looking across the board, the next highest is a 2.5. So, nothing too crazy there. But Blades of Cain, you know, a team that has not done all that well, did have a 302. The death of Volok out in New Zealand. And that is the highest placing. So three wins, a loss into two ties. And they were in range for winning the event. I think if they had won that game, they'd lost. But there's probably some issues there. Hopefully, if they change things up in the new edition, that helps. Yeah. Another interesting team that has done very poorly for a long time, Imperial Navy Breachers, all the way back up to a 45% win rate. Showing that they still absolutely do not have the chops. Zero people were in striking contention this week. Oh, that was going to be my next question. Was there anyone that, like, kind of did okay in a weird path? Uh, loss, win, win, loss, win, 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 loss, win, uh, loss, or win, loss, loss. Yeah, so no one, no one really doing anything too crazy. A team that is very hard to play, it seems, and everyone else is probably power corrupt around them, and Commando's probably... Do you just kind of eat them for lunch nowadays? I still think they're one of those ones that, like, someone that's really good could spike their their stats. Yeah, yeah it's well, just like that they've got it in them, but really they're good. they're not like thematically that cool. So people kind of just like choose other teams. Yeah, what do you think, John, about Imperial Navy Breachers? Well, I was, I was discussing it actually with other people, and it's like I think the main problem is just their predictability. 
the if you just like survive the breach and clear, that's it, and they have nothing. And it's it's a struggle for them to deal with the new teams. Like Brood Brothers really get around them because if you take the Magus, it just like mortal wounds bypasses them. They they've never been good into Galapox, uh, just because of like you just send the tentacle monster in and then he never leaves them alone and they're just trapped there forever. And like I think even into um, uh, Wormblade, it's just too many angles for them to just get harassed from. And with the change of open boards becoming incredibly open. This team has no really safe place to move up in stage. Yep. So continue continuing their uh, middling results. Hearthkin Salvagers and Hernkin Jaeger. Oh my gosh. Oh, Hernkin Jaeger out here at uh, almost fifty percent, going back to their neutral position, scoring pretty well in two different tournaments: three zero at uh, Paris and Critical in England. So two pretty good Jaeger results, mm-hmm. and. Another 2-0 finish, so doing pretty good back at their 50-50. Mandrakes, what was once the meta menace that everyone was scared of, still doing pretty well at the top end, but just at smack at 50-50. Well, no person got 0-0-0 and then a win. Yeah, of the GTs this weekend, because there were two major ones, we had Nova, which was a 70-ish person tournament, and then there was one in Russia, which might present some interesting things to talk about. There was a five-round, 56-player major, and I do spot, I think Nikita is Fior? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so there's like a, I think one of the best Russian players, they showed up in attendance, it looks like on Inquisitorial Agents, losing out just to scoring on the Mandrakes, it looks like, or maybe even yeah. strength of score. Uh, so their undefeateds were Mandrakes and Inquisitorial Agents in a 56-player, five-round tournament, and then third place, Gellerpox. Secretly Gellerpox meta. Yeah. Only the cool people can play Gellerpox. And in the GT meta, Gellerpox with a 65% <laughs> win rate. And Legionary, interestingly enough, at a sixty, almost 60% win rate. Oh. So that was a 4-1 at the Moscow Major. Only losing in the final round. Let's see if we can poke around and see who did well there. Is it not Legionnaire? Losing to Mandrakes. So he was the next closest with the, the 4-0 into a loss against the winner, the Mandrakes. Interesting. I thought Phobos would have Mandrakes. Well, this is a Legionnaire. Oh, okay, never mind. Not even then. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, either way. Either way, kind of surprising. They didn't have rosters, so maybe uncapped rosters meant that there were some more toys that actually did help them. Well, interesting they weren't using ros- rosters. I mean, if they're just following along with what Nova's doing, so... That's what everyone gets to say right now. Yeah. Uh, next highest, Felgor Ravagers, Corsair Voidsguard also did pretty well this weekend in the GT bracket. Uh, no one with a really winning record, but like overall doing pretty well. And Higher Tech Circle, surprisingly enough, did pretty well too. Leander Garrett only dropping one game. Oh gosh, that was only against me. Yeah. Rushing it otherwise. We had a couple other dudes in Moscow playing them. One of them 3-0 into an 0-2. And then everyone else kind of scattershot throughout the, the brackets. Novitiate's definitely still down. Um, oh yeah, they did. A surprise there. Awfully this weekend. Uh, pretty much just losing records across the board between the Invitational Ibericon, which is Spain's, and Nova and the Moscow Major. No one with a, even close to a winning record. And then in the broader community for Novitiates, a team that a lot of people just don't like to play against because they just cheat the whole time. They're all the way down to 31. But Novitiates are famously very hard to play because if you don't play them well and you don't just destroy people, you will just lose because you have 7 wounds and 10, 10 operatives. Yeah. A um, lot of other pretty balanced teams this weekend. Phobos and Warp Coven doing the best of the elites is pretty amusing. And Phobos did have a single loss at the Invitational in Spain on the 7 round, so, you know, mm-hmm. still showing up. Mm-hmm. 
maybe if Spain is playing these more open boards, maybe some people are uh, just blasting people away. Oh, can we check if the Invitational had rosters as well? I'm just curious. I doubt it. Because it probably would explain why, like, um, Inquisitor Agents... Yeah, no... Uh... Oh, someone has a roster. Yeah. One guy has a roster, but I'm not paying for it, so yeah. I can't see it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because Spain actually started the no roster thing. Hmm. Well, you yeah, know, there's nothing we can say about that. That's just, uh... Just the way the world is now. Yeah, just an interesting observation. Yeah, it seems like uh, things are going pretty interestingly this week, and we've got a big data set, so pretty 